Hi, Dave. Hi, Mary Beth. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new arrangement of foods, and, including that. Well, yeah, this is this is Brussels sprouts. This is how Brussels sprouts grow. It looks like Bam Bam stick. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> bam, bam. bam. Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Mary Beth. I'm just a guy who shoots video for the Washington Post, and brave enough to take on any role. But the one thing that scares me? Cooking. And I'm the food host of the Washington Post, which means I get paid to cook. And now I get to do my dream job with a friend. It's time to teach Dave to cook. Today, we are going to make our entree, chicken scaparella. That's what it is? That's what it is. Is that how you say it actually? You, can say, yeah, chi- you, know. you can say chicken with, mu- for, with peppers and sausage if you want to do no, that. No, no, I want to say it the way you said it. Chicken scaparella. Chicken scaparella. Oh my gosh, you did amazing. Well, I... And you're Nordic. See, I'm Italian, but I've seen Nordic. the Godfather twice. <laughs> And wow. part two, once. Then you're an honorary Italian. <laughs> it's the same. So it's a chicken dish that's cooked with sausage and peppers. The great thing about this dish is that you can cook it in advance, okay. keep it in the refrigerator for like a couple of days, and then just rewarm it the day you want to serve it. Because it smells amazing, because it's like chicken stock and vinegar and wine and onions. This is a cast iron skillet. Yes. Do you own one? I do now. Do you know why? No. Because when we made steak, I was like, I need some other skillet. And that was the first one I bought. Oh my gosh, really? Really? I'm not joking. This How much was it? $35. Perfect. Usually I don't measure oil, right? I just like put what looks like two tablespoons of oil in the pan. So we're not looking to cook the sausages all the way through, just to brown them. Because the thing about a sauce, as you found out with the pan sauce, is that it takes on the flavor of whatever's on the bottom, right? right? So we're gonna get the brown deliciousness on the, all over the sausages. That's gonna go into the sauce and it's gonna like, Okay. Become delicious and Oh, that yum. makes sense. Yeah, you know what that feels like. So the other thing, uh-huh. scapagliello. Scapagliello. In Italian, uh-huh. it means shoemakers, like shoemaker's chicken. Shoe, like the people who made shoes made the... Yeah, like cobblers, because it's a meager dish. The Italian shoemakers didn't make a lot of money. I mean, <laughs> tell that to Bruno Molly, right? <laughs> yeah. So they needed a meager dish that was sort of cobbled together with stuff thrown in it. So that's where it came from, shoemaker's chicken. I like it. So see, it's a it's a di- meal with a story too. So let's yeah. say that you make this for somebody at your house and you don't have a lot to talk about, then you can talk about this. So the thing is, is like you don't want to move them around too much. It won't brown if you keep, just keep moving it around, poking it around. Leave it alone. Okay. Now already, doesn't your place smell great? It smells amazing. So now we're going to season the chicken. Okay. Now kosher salt, the reason that it's so good for seasoning is because it's big, the crystals are big, Mm -hmm. so it's easy to pick up and just throw in. Now I like to put it in a little pot so that, you know, when you're done with it, you can either use all of it or you just have a few grains left and you can just throw it away because it's all raw chicken-y. All right, now let's take the sausage out. Deal. (laughs) I could do this all day. And now put this chicken in skin side down because we want that skin to get nice and crunchy and crisp. And then you've got a really rich mouthfeel sauce. You've got the tang of the vinegar, plus you've got the sweetness of the peppers. It's like a beautiful contrast of flavors and textures. That's why I love this dish so much. Just putting all this in there was weirdly satisfying. The way they fit too. I don't know if you did that intentionally. I did not do that intentionally. I didn't measure it out. It's like all the Power Rangers came together. Have you ever chopped garlic? Uh, Once before with you here in this kitchen (laughs) many months ago. And that's how this show was born. It was because you didn't know the difference between a head of garlic and a clove of garlic. I know now the difference. What's, What's this? That's a clove. Great job. Thank you. Do you know how to peel a clove of garlic? No. The best technique is this. Whoa! And then it just comes right off. Just... Yeah! Did it too much? No! That was great! Thank you. For your first smash? For my first smash? It was amazing. Thank you. How do you feel? I feel great. I could smash garlic all day. As Confident? Well. Yeah. Older? Older. <laughs> Wiser, <laughs> smashier. Now the parts that you want to get rid of are like parts that you wouldn't want to eat. Like right. I wouldn't want to eat that, right? Yeah. So you can just slice that off. Goodbye, thing I don't like. In very small pieces lengthwise, and then in very small pieces crosswise. You know those Instagrams where they, it's just people chopping stuff? No. Doing satisfying things? Okay, well, there's these Instagrams where people chop stuff and do satisfying things. You can mince garlic on that and just oh. get 
just get all. Can I make money this way? Probably. All right. Get a sponsor. Stay tuned. Yes. One way to keep it all in one place is to put a little salt down. Ooh. And then that keeps it in place. Also, it sounds good, doesn't it? It crunch, does. Crunch, crunch. Uh, as okay. I'm telling you. Ooh. Yeah, there you go. Wow. So you want to take off the chicken and remove it to the plate. Okay. You want to put brown side up? Yeah. Just, okay. Because we want to keep that brown side crunchy. Right. If we put it brown side down, it'll get soggy. Perfect. While the onions are cooking, we're going to measure out some liquid for the sauce. Okay. We're going to do a cup of wine. Ooh. Yeah. But what about for the sauce? <laughs> okay. <laughs> a cup of chicken stock. Put those onions in. Put in the garlic. <gasps> you see how there are little brown bits on the bottom yes. of the pan? Uh -huh. The wine will get them off the bottom of the pan and add them into the sauce. Oh, cool. Nice. Ooh. Perfect. Oh. We're gonna reduce that wine by about half just to get just it concentrated. And while that's going on, you can measure out a half a cup of white wine vinegar. So now you can see that the liquid, the wine, has uh -huh. reduced to about half okay. of what we poured in. So now we're going to put in the stock and the vinegar. Okay. Okay, so pour in that chicken stock. White wine vinegar has a much better flavor than white vinegar, which most people use for like cleaning. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our chicken back into the pan. And we want the crunchy part on top to stay crunchy. That was the most satisfying thing I've ever picked up in my life. You wanna try to avoid getting on top of the skin because we wanna try to keep the skin crispy. Like there would be good. Yep. Okay. Now, slice the sausages as big of a piece as you would want to take a bite when you're eating a bite with a piece of chicken. If you feel like the people who you're eating with would not eat at the end, don't put the end in. I like to surround myself with people who would eat the end. <laughs> I mean, that's actually a good test. If you have somebody over to your house and they won't eat the sausage end, just like... <laughs> Get out of here. I don't need you anymore. Never eat sausage in my home again. There you go. Fantastic. Now the magic happens. Okay. I have my oven heated to 350 degrees. This whole thing goes into the oven and you forget about it. Forget about it. For 30 minutes. That's right, because it's Italian chicken, so you forget about forget it. Forget about it. There you go. All right. Goodbye, sweet chicken. Till we meet again. Those look great on you. I'm gonna buy you a pair for These a secret Santa. These are fun Santa. and comfortable. Yeah. Oh my God. But oh. actually. Man, wow. Look at that. It smells incredible. It's glossy, which is beautiful, but oh, there are also pops of red. Uh -huh. And you know what else I'm gonna do? No. Come on, you do it. You can also use curly par- you can use any kind of parsley you want. Okay. I didn't know that there were different types of parsley, so. I mean, can you imagine bringing this to the table, oh. being like dinner is served? You don't have to say that twice. There's a ton of sausage in there. There's a ton of peppers. There's plenty for everyone. So if you're making this for even like two people, you could just put two pieces of chicken in here and that would do just fine, right? Absolutely. No question. That is correct. However, this keeps so well, not just in the refrigerator for a few days, and it gets better over time. Right, you know, so making it with six is not such a bad idea anyway. Because you could eat it the next day. You can right. give it to your next door neighbor. That's the right. The person who never gets any visitors, who needs a little love. I know who you're talking about. You know, so like, it's... <laughs> Thinking about you, I don't know their name. Oh, look at that, that melty, so that's, that's what happens to the pepper, is that the pepper gets all melty. Yes. Are you doing okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm so ready to eat it, okay. I can't even like. Look at your bite. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm already, I'm ahead of you here. Mm, oh my gosh. See, it's oh, tangy, man. and it's rich, and it's sweet, and it's crunchy, and it's tender. Now, what do you think of chicken thighs, by the way? Love them. Yeah. Okay, so Dave, what did you learn today? Italian shoemakers are geniuses mm -hmm. on a broader scale. Just on Italian a, scale. On a more specific scale, I learned how to brown chicken. I've never done that before. I've cooked chicken like in a pot pan before, but not really without a lot of thought or like forethought or afterthought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've learned how to cook a meal that could be for six people or two, then I have a bunch for the rest of the week. And it's not just something like, oh, I have to eat this because I made so much. Like, I want to eat this, <laughs> which is a huge difference. We all know those dishes, right? Oh, totally. <laughs> like, I just have to finish Yeah, them. I have to finish. I cook so much, but like, this is like, I would all week look forward to eating the rest of this. Yeah. Nothing we used today was, was uh, made with something I don't have. I could make this right now. I'm, I mean, if I you weren't if going will. home with the leftovers, perhaps you would. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to make everybody in the Washington Post kitchen very jealous tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> Especially the shoemakers. On the next, teach Dave to cook.
We create a classic make-ahead chocolate dessert. Yeah! And we find out if there's anything Dave won't do for $10. Oh my God. That's pretty good. Let me go get my wallet. Join us for the finale. I want to eat more.